my name is uh, Javier. Um, my my German uh, my German friends call me H4 because uh, they pronounce it like Habia or uh, Sava or something like that. It just doesn't sound uh, really nice in my Spanish uh, ears. So H4 is the way Ha is. Uh, like this, and Fia is the number four, right? So it's like my kanji for my name. Anyway, um, we're going to talk about, uh, and, and you can find my stuff on um, uh, all my research and, and things like going on here on uh, my website, www.profh4.com. Okay, so you just if you want to Google it, uh, I do research on, uh, on these things, on cyber physical systems and stuff uh, related, right? So we want to talk about uh, cyber physical systems. Uh, I, will, um, I will write CPS, okay, not uh, to write everything. And uh, the first thing is to know what is a cyber physical system, okay? So a CPS uh, is defined by uh, Shaw uh, and Ward in uh, 2003 as a uh, system uh, of uh, socio-technical nature. that uh, aims uh, to systematically reduce uh, process variability. When we say process, we mean value creating process variability, okay? So we're focusing on the value creation of the, of the business. Uh, and uh, when we say variability, we're talking about uh, the reduction of the, uh, of the standard deviation of the, of the KPI, right? So you know um, here, um, well, you know the, the formula of the standard deviation. I don't know, this is just basic statistics. Uh, the, so any KPI, we want to reduce the, the standard deviation. We would just want the, our, our Gauss curve to get uh, tighter. And uh, this is what we do. But the important thing here on a management lecture is to understand what is a social technical system. Okay, and this is what we're going to do in, uh, in, in quite a um, fair amount of detail. Okay, so what is a social technical system? And what implications do we draw from this definition? Okay, this is not defined by uh, Shaw and Ward. This is uh, something uh, I came up with um, after a fair amount of research. Uh, feel free to use it, the concept, uh, if you use it, you need to name it, okay? Just uh, like in any research um, issue. So feel free to use it, you need to name it. So this is a social scale or a social axis, if you want. And uh, the vertical is going to be our technical axis. So I'm, I'm going to draw a... Um, let's say a framework as an ounce that describes uh, a, a social technical world. Complexity is gonna uh, be uh, increasing from left to right, okay, on a social axis, and uh, complexity is gonna be increasing from uh, bottom to top on a technical axis. So this is uh, fairly, um, intuitive, at least uh, in Europe and uh, the US. Maybe in China you do it 
the other way around, but, uh, or in Hong Kong, sorry, uh, I'm not about politics, so. Uh, the, the thing is, uh, complexity is growing this way, okay? That way and that way. Anyway, which is the, uh, we start with a social access, and this is going to, these principles are gonna be universal, okay? So um, this, uh, I think, is valid for uh, Asia, it's valid for US, it's valid for Europe, it's valid for Africa, any, any way, any place, any time. It's a principle-based framework. Um, and um, I hope you see it that way. What is the uh, smallest unit of a social environment? The human being, right? So we have the person. This is uh, the human uh, person. And this guy, which is gonna be you, and you, and you, and you, and anybody working on an organization needs to have a uh, balance between the, his, her character, who he is or who she is, and uh, his competence. What this guy can do. I am sure you don't um, call a doctor who has a, a super good character, and you can talk about this, uh, about anything with this guy, but uh, is going to um, offer you an operation or some medicaments that you don't need in order to make money. This doctor is, uh, is not going to be the right doctor for you, right? Uh, also, if you have a doctor uh, that uh, has the right character, but doesn't know the right things for you, for your illness, uh, is not gonna be the right doctor for you, right? If you have, a, like let's say a husband or a wife that uh, provides uh, enough resources for your marriage, but uh, has the wrong character and uh, lies to you and cheats on you, this is not the right uh, partner for you, right? So if you uh, have uh, the right character, if you find the right guy, but this guy uh, cannot provide for your family, think about it. Because it might not be the right guy or girl for you, okay? So in the, in the world, in any role you play, you need to have both character and competence both in any role you play. Otherwise, you cannot play. You will not be allowed to play, okay? When you're learning in the university, okay, you are getting, what, are, what you're getting is competence, basically a bunch of, uh, what happens now? Sometimes it comes up. Uh, wait a second. I'm going to join again. <coughs> Sorry about this. Just a slot, lost connection, my iPad, that's why. How was that? It's just a pity. I cannot. Uh, Record it. I can continue on the wall, but then I cannot record it. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it differently. No, I'm. I'm, I'm in again. Let's try again. Okay. There is no risk, but there's no possibility, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm in again. Um, anyway, 
So let's come back. Uh, sorry about this. Um, if you want to, uh, if you want to uh, be in a society and be active in the society, you need both character and competence. When you are in the university, you're learning basically competence. Okay, you're learning a bunch of uh, things that might help or might not, but you're learning capabilities and skills. You're not working on your character. You are not working on your character. Fundamentally, a flaw of at least Western uh, way to, uh, build, to bring up people. I, I, I'm not really sure how you do it. We're trying to emphasize both. Yeah, so this, this is a, a, the proper way. So you need both character and competence uh, because the world is super tough, okay? So when you're in business, it doesn't matter if you're a good professional competence, you also need to have a tough mind. Otherwise, you don't get through. Um, the way we call this, the, the, the balance between character and competence is trustworthiness. Trustworthiness. And you need to be trustworthy in order to play any role you want to play. If it's husband or wife or doctor, professional, engineer, anything. If you go out there and in a couple years you are managers of a technological company and you start uh, cheating on the KPIs, you might come along for maybe two weeks, or maybe two months, or maybe two years. At some point, they will discover you and your reputation will be gone, okay? So make your mind hard. Hmm? Another way to think about it is that uh, this guy, so you, has uh, three degrees of liberty and no more. And this is true, as I said, for uh, Asia and uh, for Europe and for any place you go in the world. You have three degrees of liberties. You can decide what you think, you can decide what you say, and you can decide what you do. Let me paint a, let's say a hammer here, okay? So you decide what you think, what you say, and what you do. So, and uh, if there's a delta between what you are thinking and what you're saying, then uh, you are hitting trustworthiness. So you are losing your power. If you say something different than what you think, you're losing your power. You're giving away trustworthiness. Okay? The next level, as you can imagine, is going to be the relationship level. going to be the relationship level. You have any questions, you guys? I was just thinking about if the I talk before I think, and is that like the same tension that we saw before? Well, well, you shouldn't say everything that you're thinking, because that, that ends up usually <coughs> bad. But whatever you say, you should back it up with your principles. That's what I'm trying to say. If you say something, and you're misleading, and you have a double agenda, People will not know at first, but as we just noticed, Christina and myself, you will see everybody at least twice in, in your life. So if you're a fuck up, people will know, and that will spread up, okay? People will find out, and then you will be left out of society. That, that's what I'm trying to say, okay? So you can, you can have a double agenda and have two handies and have two girlfriends. Uh, you can do it for, for six months, maybe, uh, and, and a year. But at some point, you will break within yourself, right? That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, you need to make your character strong. 
You know, I don't know how you say it in, uh, in Hong Kong, in Asia. At least in Japan, they say kibishi, right? So be like a warrior, okay? Make, make your, your fist hard, okay? And uh, that's, the, that's the way I'm, I'm trying to, uh, you know, uh, ex express the concept. Because the next level, after trustworthiness, you have your relationships. And you have a relationship to anybody you are dealing with even if you don't want to, people will just, you know, perceive you and the way you move, you, the way you talk. And uh, relationships are based on trust. Excuse me, does it mean uh, social capital? Yeah. Relational capital. Yeah, relational capital. So you're, you're based on trust, right? So your whole being in a social capital manner is based on trust. And you cannot have a trust relationship with somebody if you're not trustworthy. So if you're fundamentally flawed within yourself, people will not see it at first. And you can uh, fool some guys for some time, but you cannot fool everybody all the time. That, that just doesn't work, right? So in order to get trust, you need to be trustworthy. Uh, I, I, a way to think about it is, uh, or, or a way to think about uh, trust is really this capital. Uh, just gave me an idea, uh, professor. Uh, let's say you have a bank account with everybody you deal with. A trust account. Okay, so every time you interact, you're throwing trust uh, dollars in and trust of dollars out. So you can invest trust money, not money, but trust, you know, and uh, you can withdraw if you make a mistake, and everybody makes mistakes, always, every day. You can withdraw trust money, uh, and then, uh, yeah, you just have to live with it, apologize or whatever, right? So if you have invested before, you can uh, withdraw some money because there is something in the bank account. Okay, so uh, there is, if there is a gap between what you uh, say and what you do, let's say uh, you promise your customer you're gonna deliver a certain product, you say, but you don't do it, what happens with the customer? The customer is angry, so you lose trust with the customer. If you promise your boyfriend, your girlfriend, you're going to send some flowers and take her to the um, movies. I don't know. And you don't do it because you have a very important presentation to make. Then your girlfriend is going to be upset. So you withdraw money from your trust account, right? So this is the way to think about it. You have three degrees of liberties on a personal level. Think, say, and do. And uh, not more, not less. So you're cool so far? Any questions? Is that, does this make sense? Any questions? The guy there with his mobile phone. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> no? Okay, cool. All right, then uh, the, next, uh, the next level on the social environment, let's say, uh, is the uh, managerial level. Say this is uh, your uh, people and this is the hand uh, of the manager. And what you're trying to do in, on a managerial level You're trying to empower people. In German, they say Befähigung, right? So you try to bring people up or bring processes up to the next level of performance. Okay, so you try to teach people new things. These activities that you're doing are uh, empowerment activities, right? Um, basically, the whole uh, 
university is an empowerment action. Hmm? But you cannot empower people without a trust relationship, and you cannot have a trust relationship if you're not trustworthy. And this is, I think, universal. It is like this in your university. It's like this 100 years ago, 500 years ago, any time, any place. It's a principle. So when you get a management role in, let's say, five years, and you say, we are going to implement uh, artificial intelligence, or we're going to implement this cool new concept. I learned we're going to uh, implement this new culture of continuous improvement, whatever. You are saying something, and people listen to you because you have a responsibility. You are the leader of the organization. If you don't follow up with your behavior with what you do and you just let people do you just say you do it I don't do it I'm the, I'm the boss you do it guess what it will not work per definition people will follow your feed they will not follow your words actually uh, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care Okay, so think about it again. So nobody cares if you're super, super smart and you are, no, they need to know that you care for them. So in case you don't know the pet's name and the kid's name and your wife's name of your people, you haven't tried hard enough. Okay, so it's, it's about people. Even in the midst of artificial intelligence, especially with artificial intelligence, is about people, okay? So it's not very bad to study management these days. Of course, you need to uh, know what AI is, and you need to yeah, harness the power and use it, but it's about people, as long as people are customers. In the, in the moment that people are not customers anymore, then things will change. Anyway, uh, we have management level. This is where you guys are right now, so preparing yourselves to get to be managers. Um, but there is another level, which is an organizational level. Sorry. There is this next level, called uh, organizational level. in which you get all these arrows coming from the management. So all these arrows. And uh, you try to align them. To what? To a certain strategic goal. So this is like your magnet. Strategic goals. These are given, okay? If it's uh, revenue, if it's uh, our rosy, if it's uh, growth, I don't know, quality, whatever it is, okay? So these are given. You need to grow by 10% by the end of the year, 20%, whatever. Okay, so these are given. You need to align yourself and to get, as we will see later on, I hope uh, with a uh, little math, <laughs> uh, as you will see yourself later on, um, complex organizations formed by thousands of people are not so easy to align because every, every single individual has a mind of its own. People want to be acknowledged. Okay, I want to be me. I want to be me. And if I'm not me, then I'm not going to be. If I'm not allowed to be me, then what the fuck? I'm doing here. And uh, in a way, companies exploit people uh, because they know that people are dependent. In a couple of years from now, you will have kids. A couple of years from now, you will have a mortgage. 
maybe you will have um, a divorce, uh, maybe you will pay double mortgage, uh, and then you're fucked. You, they, they've got you by the balls in a way. Uh, let, me, let me, okay, put it uh, in a metaphorical way, okay? So uh, what you do? You keep playing the role. You keep playing the role because you have a mortgage, a kid, blah, blah, blah. But inside you're broken or you will break slowly. And uh, you will distance yourself from your wife or from your husband because you're sad, because you cannot be, okay? So what, I, what I'm, trying to, uh, I'm trying to transmit you in 90 minutes, we have, okay, it's not long, is that try to uh, get your core strong. So it is very cool to program and uh, uh, sleep on, on your computer with a bowl of rice uh, programming. People will think you're a hard worker and uh, you kill for it, but that's not strength. You're giving up your power. Strength is within yourself. In the um, quiet minute that you spend with yourself, you're at peace with it. So you're doing the right thing for you and for your spirit. A way to think about people that I also think is universal is, uh, um, let's say you're four dimensional. This is you, okay? So let's say you have um, here, this, this, this guy, right? So uh, this guy is this guy. So this guy is four-dimensional. He has, or she has, I'm sorry, it's, uh, excuse me, ladies. Uh, she has uh, a body. Because this person has a body, has uh, the need to live. It's, it's an intrinsic need, so you need food, you need shelter, you need a portion, right? You need stuff. So this guy uh, also has the need uh, also has a heart has the need to love. Right? So you have the need to have an emotional connection to the people and to your surroundings and to stuff you're dealing with. You have also uh, a third dimension, which is your mind. I'm, I'm going to paint a, a little brain here. Okay, so this is your mind. And here you have the need to learn. And this is a human need. Okay? And then you have the need to, uh, or, or you have the dimension of your spirit, here you have the need to leave a legacy. If any person, if any organization neglects any of these dimensions, they neglect you as a human being. Okay? And if they neglect you as a human being, you will get broken inside at some point. It is just uh, not, it's what I uh, used to tell girls when I went to the disco. Uh, it is not a question if we're getting together, it's just a question when. Okay? Nicht ob, wann. You will get broken. If an organization or a boss or a professor or a uh, colleague, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, anybody, neglects any of these dimensions and uh, uses you because you're a very good, very smart, or uh, uses you because you're very attractive, 
or uses you because you are an emotional support, then they are neglecting your human nature. And then you should just say, what? Go away. Cut it. Just uh, hard, but effective. Because you don't have a lot of time. You might think you're 20, in your 20s maybe, you might think life is long, things uh, will come along. Before you know it, you're 45. <laughs> Before you know it, you're 55. Before you know it, uh, your kids are demanding. Your responsibility is to use your time now to get prepared for the future, because the future is gonna come faster than you think. So get your core prepared. Do not wait, do not say, well, no, this guy is okay. Um, I'm gonna just, uh, let's say, okay, he lied to me, maybe, uh, no problem. Will not, I will change him. That, that is just Hollywood shit. You don't change people. People change or not, but you don't change them. So don't, don't trust on that. Trust on yourself, on your core, right? Uh, you need uh, some uh, courage, yeah? Just get the courage. I don't know where you guys get the courage, get the courage to do it and go and live your life, okay? Anyway, you don't get uh, alignment. This is what we need uh, at a strategic level. Alignment, a common direction. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Well, the brain is called here. It's 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 the mind here. <coughs> okay. I, I don't. I didn't understand the question. So, what's the question? Well, the, with the mind is we are. I mean the. I mean the. The, the human. The let's say the. Um, the thought process you have. Okay, so you are you because you have a certain set of experiences that have shaped your uh, um, brain to behave in a certain manner. Okay, and if you had had different life experiences, you would uh, be a different man, right? So. Uh, with, with the mind, I mean your personality, who you are, okay, and your thought process. And this thought process has the need intrinsically to learn. And if you neglect it, you will go down. Actually, if you neglect any of these levels, you will go down. If you, let's say, companies, uh, at least here in Europe, uh, I mean, how this whole thing started. Um, I, sorry, what's your name? What? Zach. Zach. Cool. Zach. Cool name. Anyway, how this, this whole thing started. Don't, uh, I mean, this is a totally uh, non-historical perspective, okay? This is just, uh, it's, a, it's also a very uh, European one, so don't, don't hang me. What's up? What's going on? Don't hang me uh, because of the... Uh, the years, I'm just trying to explain a concept. So if you guys have a question, just ask, okay, please. I have 60 people here and I'm, I don't wanna lose my voice, so I don't wanna fight against yours, please. So let's say uh, 1860 something, Europe discovers uh, steam power, industrial revolution starts, and uh, people need, uh, companies need bodies. Arbeitskräfte, you know in German, Arbeitskräfte, power of the body, you know? So they use people as strength, they use the body. Let's say uh, we, we, we tune up after a couple of wars and stuff, uh, 1960s, uh, you don't, see not only need a body, you also need people that know things. Right, you need a brain. 
you need uh, people that work in the factories and you need people that know a little bit of electronics and stuff like that, so you also need a brain. And you start teaching people special skills. Bring people over from, uh, come in. Bring people over from uh, Africa, from South America, bring people over from Turkey, uh, from Spain, from Greece, from Italy, and build up the uh, German, um, let's say, uh, miracle. Okay? So you bring people, you bring brains, basically. Uh, but all, that also work. Okay, so uh, let's say uh, 1980s, uh, the people with brains have had kids, okay? So you have a comp an internal competition, so you want your people to stay. What, what you start doing, you start uh, giving them t-shirts with your logo and the name, okay? So that they know they're from Bosch and Daimler and stuff, okay? And so you got their hearts, you had the hearts in place. But you don't, you don't tell them that they, uh, they are there for a reason. No, no, this, this guy at the machine, he does that very well. But you don't tell them they are a part of a big castle. This is something that in Asia is differently managed. At, the, at least the way I've experienced it in Japan, they give you a sense that you're a part of a whole. Okay? And this is the key for a future uh, that European slash American management culture has not understood yet. Okay? And this is the reason why I think Asia is just going to roll over the world uh, faster than COVID. It's, it's just a matter of not if, it's just a matter of time. Because Asia works together. They think they're a part of a whole. And okay, um, maybe some individuals think differently, but the system is aligned. And this is the power. Uh, that, that's why uh, it's unstoppable. And even if we know it here, we can stop it. Very good. Just to give you an example, uh, COVID somehow has been over in, in, in Europe for, for many, many months already, yeah. more than a year. But in Hong Kong, you know, the uh, mask sort of uh, uh, has been lifted uh, by the government a month ago. It still is around. We still have some students yeah. wearing masks. Yeah, I'm saying that. That's the difference. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, it's a different mindset. It's not, it's not something you see. And you got the people, they, I mean, you know, it's, it's something in the spirit. And, and that's the core. It's something in the spirit. That's why I paint here uh, yin yang, okay? And I don't paint uh, something, let's say, I don't know, Christian or something like that. It's the spirit, it's the core. It's something that you cannot see because these guys are living a legacy. And it's in their culture, it's in their core, it's in their families, the way they live it. Um, at least what I've seen in Japan, I, I have not been in uh, continental Asia, uh, uh, I don't know it, but um, at least what I've seen, okay, it's a, it's, it's a different mindset. And uh, this is something that needs to happen soon, let's say 20XX, because we have uh, AI coming. as so AI, artificial intelligence, uh, why? Because if we don't do it, we will lose our humanity. We are the, it's a, this, this is a very uh, exciting, also dangerous time in uh, history of humanity. Please. I want to ask a question. Yeah.
Yeah, it's, uh, in, in my opinion, I don't agree with Maslow. I, I know it's a theory of management. I just don't agree with it. Uh, if, you're, if, you're, if your health is not good, you will not be able to focus on learning for long. If your spirit, if your, if your spirit aches, let's say your boyfriend left uh, for good and you miss him, <coughs> or you, you will not be able to learn for a little, you know? So you, you are a whole. And uh, as a whole unit, you need to be understood. It's a circle, okay? It's like, let's say, um, I mean, let me, let me be a little bit artistic. This cannot be done by chat GPT yet. Um, let me give you a, 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 little, a, little, uh, a little drawing, okay? This is your body, okay? The way I see it, okay? It doesn't mean that it's correct. It's just the way I see it in an artistic way. Uh, your body should try to concentrate in itself. So you need to uh, eat healthy, you need to sport, you need to be slim in order to have a good body, right? So an inward spiral. Mm -hmm. Your um, spirit in a similar way needs to concentrate within itself. So you, you meditate and you, you concentrate on your frontal cortex and you, you experience here some sort of heat on your prefrontal cortex if you meditate, uh, which means that you're getting within yourself. So you're going into your core, inward spiral. You are learning, however, And when you learn, uh, sorry, the other way around. When you learn, you want to see the world. That's why you come to Europe. That's why you visit, and that's why you meet people from Africa, and you meet people from Germany. And uh, uh, you, go to, you go places because you want to learn. You're curious. And... Uh, when you are, uh, so this is your, sorry, this is your body. This is your spirit. This is your mind. And guess what? This is your, uh, so, no. Uh, this is your heart. Love increases if you give it to more people. Okay, so if you love more, you get more. What you have here is two yin yans acting together. One and two. This is the way I see it in a very, let's say, artistic way. Uh, please apologize. Yeah. Okay, so you're a unit. You cannot be dissected in parts and Cherokees. Maslow was an American from the 19 something. He, uh, he didn't really give a fuck about people. He wanted to increase productivity. That's why he explained what he explained. And how do you, just as Taylor, just as many, okay? And, and we're stuck there. We stuck with uh, organizations that have a hierarchical uh, organizational um, structure. Why? Because uh, after the, at least here in, in the area, uh, why? Because after the war, the guys that were fighting got over the organizations because they knew productivity. They, know, they knew how to organize. And this has uh, longed over time. So, so with the advancement of the artificial intelligence, either we stay humans, all humans, or we will lose. The way I see it. Anyway, um, any more questions? You're cool so far? Yeah? 
I like the idea of being a young and being applied here. So basically, I've been a part of the teaching my students as well using the uh, ancient Chinese wisdom of Confucianism, yeah. right, in terms of the, the middle way, you know, or, 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 or the, 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 kind of the means, the doctrine of the means. Yep. Basically, when you have, like, like apply to, to entrepreneurship or, or R&D nowadays, even in the West, imagine a series are developing along this duality. So you got the exploratory, ex exploitative sort of innovation, yep. you know, maintaining the sort of a gradual, incremental, and then you have disruptive sort of innovation. Continuously. Yeah. yeah. So, so actually, the whole world is coming converging yep. somehow in 10 minutes. See, basically, uh, we are dealing here with a society in, in Western, which is based on Aristotle. Uh, and uh, you guys have 5,000 years before Aristotle, a whole bunch of things going on. So a whole culture uh, that had been developed before. So whatever you can think of, it was made before in Asia, basically. That, that's, uh, that's the way it is. So uh, that's, a, that's a treasure. And that's why uh, you can truly say that the way to picture the world, the, the way you guys see the world is wider, different, uh, more holistic than, uh, you know, the more effective, maybe the more effective way to achieve goals that the Western has. Long term, I, as I said, uh, there's, no, there's no way that China or Asia overrun, overrules uh, the whole, the whole uh, game. So there's no way to stop it. Uh, anyway, um, all right, so we have the social level. We'll cope with that. Yeah. Then we go to the technical level, maybe uh, a little, I go here a little faster. Uh, let's think about a factory, maybe. Here we have, let's say, one machine. Machine level. Which is basically um, formed by a bunch of sensors and mechanisms that are linked together within a network. Um, if you add up several of these units, let's say machines uh, put together in whatever, in whatever way necessary, okay? Also in a network, you get uh, what we call a process or a value stream. The next level is if you put several of these value streams together in, uh, let's say, in a facility. You have your foundry, you have your, your machining, you have your uh, assembly, so you have your factory. If you put certain factories together, you have a supply chain. Also, in a way of interconnected, so let's say a network. So you see how it adds up? If your variability, if your machine doesn't work properly, standard deviation of certain parameters are gone, then your uh, quality is not, uh, is not there, then you don't have a process that works out properly, and then uh, the factory goes down south, and again, your supply chain is gonna crawl, uh, it's gonna come down. So what here, what I'm saying is that here, you're uh, adding up complexity by the natural mass customization that we're dealing up uh, with today, uh, it's going to be a challenge. Any, everybody wants that their telephone is their telephone. If you see what Apple does here with your name, here, um, H4, iPhone, okay? So we have a mass customization process. 
The product is my product, and I demand that it's my product, and I want to have it now. If you, if you wait, or if you have to wait for, let's say, 10 seconds for uh, Amazon to uh, recommend you a product, you go somewhere else. Or Alibaba, I don't know what you have uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, here we have Amazon. Uh, or if you wait for Zalando to, uh, to recommend you some shoes and you have to wait for 10 seconds for that, you go. You, you go somewhere else. You are not ready to wait for the product. You want it now and you want it your product and you want it right away, okay? So, and this is a fact. So, um, and um, what we see here, what I've tried to picture uh, this last uh, hour, let's say, is here a framework. A framework. <coughs> and what happens here is that within this framework we need to operate. Not only on a personal, not only on a relational, also at a managerial level and at organizational level. So all these points need to be addressed. And this could be a matter for a whole lecture, I don't know. We could be talking about this for four months and still not be ready. Um, but just intuitively, in a couple months, in a couple years, when you're a manager, uh, let's say of a complex supply chain delivering products to California or delivering products to uh, uh, Africa, to South America, to Europe, um, you cannot act equally on an individual level at the factory, at the supply level uh, in, in the process or at the supply chain management level. Um, globally. You need to behave differently when you're a manager, uh, when you go uh, visit a factory in, uh, let's say, Hong Kong, or when you visit a factory in Tokyo, or when you visit a factory in um, San Francisco, Chicago, Brazil, things are different. People behave different. If you go to, a, I don't know, a Japanese guy, and you try to uh, hug him the first time you see him, then you are just gone. <laughs> that you're not in business. If you don't hug a Brazilian guy, you're not in business. If you don't go drink uh, sake uh, with, a, with a Japanese guy uh, after working 12 hours, you're not in business. If you don't go have a churrasco, uh, let's say a barbecue, with a Brazilian guy, you're not in business. <laughs> so you need to adapt. You need to be, uh, let's say, have a palette of uh, many colors in which you can uh, paint your behavior. It's not manipulation, it's just called adapting. And if you adapt and you're successful, and you get what you want, that's called success. If you are not successful, that's called failure, that's called learning a lesson, and that it means that you need to adapt for next time. Okay? So, yeah, that's the way it is. Anyway, any questions? We have a complex framework. This is what I try to point out here. Framework, digitalization. We have described what cyber physical systems are. Well, uh, actually, it's uh, called uh, framework and cyber physical systems. Now we talk about digitalization and strategies. Okay? But before I continue, any questions so far? Questions? Fragen? Auch auf Deutsch? Hongkonese, I don't understand. All right, well then, uh, yeah. Oh, 
Well, I, I can tell you the way I do it. I, I don't know how you will do it. The way I do it is I try to be hard on myself. Uh, say, uh, cold water or showers. Oh, fuck, yeah. <laughs> well, that, that gets you in the morning and, and gets your balls tight, you know? You know? Uh, so I try to make sport and uh, not eat. I, I love to eat, but I try to keep myself, uh, you know, this, this, this role, I try to keep it down as much as I can, you know? So uh, just be tough on yourself. Just when you have a um, management position, one thing you will notice is uh, hubris. I don't know if you're familiar, if you guys are familiar with this concept. Super interesting what power does to your brain. I'm just gonna use your question to tell a story, okay? I don't know if you, I'm, I'm, if I don't answer your question, let me know. Okay, what's your name? Uh, my name is Anton. Anton? Yes. Okay, so let's say uh, one thing is called hubris. And this is what power does to your brain. And this is a very, very fucked up thing. You see, it happens, it has happened, and it will continue to happen throughout the history. And this is very, very, very dangerous for you, for your family, for those you love. And so what happens to a brain that uh, has power? Let's say, let me paint here a Homer Simpson. And I'm gonna paint his brain. So we have here one area called, um, here one area, called prefrontal uh, cortex, okay, which is here, the, this, let's say, frontal area. We have the prefrontal cortex, which is where we make decisions, which is the most uh, uh, forward area of our brains. And we have, again, another, area here, very little. If you do like this with your finger, uh, you will see a little bump somewhere, eyebrows bump, okay? This is your orbitofrontal cortex. Orbitofrontal. I'm gonna write it. Orbitofrontal. This is orbitofrontal, this is uh, frontal, uh, prefrontal. Well, the prefrontal cortex is where uh, you guys uh, make decisions. So it's where we, as humans, uh, gather all the information. Lion is coming, run. Uh, female, go. Right? So food, catch. Stuff like that. So the prefrontal cortex is making decisions. And the orbital frontal cortex is the morale. So is this decision right or not within my society? Within my moral codex, which is different in Asia, and it's different here, and it's different in Africa, and it's different in, I don't know. It depends on the culture. So what happens when this guy the average manager, let's say, is under pressure. And if you're managers, you will be under pressure. Well, this guy activates the hippocampus, which is the place, like the factory in the brain, where uh, things uh, and, and certain uh, neurotransmitters are produced and they get delivered straight to the different areas. So if the, if the lion is coming, you activate your legs and you run and adrenaline and stuff. And uh, so the fact of the matter is that this orbital frontal cortex is very far away logistically, like let's say structurally. 
is very far away from your hippocampus. What happens if you're under pressure? You need your valuable brain resources, your valuable neurotransmitters for verbal, for numerical calculations. You need to, de you need to deploy that uh, presentation for your uh, boss. Uh, you don't have time for, for your kid. You don't have time for homework. You need to make that. I'm very busy. Uh, there's a song in, in German uh, here. Uh, um, 21 emails, so I'm going to be done. I have a lot of emails to write. I'm not ready for you. And there's a guy talking to his girlfriend. So you're always busy. What happens? Under pressure, neurotransmitters don't get, or might not get, if you're not very stable, to your orbital frontal cortex. And you experience this, where you experience this? In war extreme stress situations where people do stuff that is not moral, right? Probably, I don't know if you've seen war, but uh, maybe in the films, in the movies. Okay, so wait, uh, so the, the fact of the matter is that if you're under stress, you might get to a position, let's say you're under stress of delivering KPIs, productivity, Quality, cost, boom, 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 you're hammered every day, boom, boom, boom. At some point you say, well, I'm gonna just change this number, it doesn't matter, nobody will notice. What happens then? You get your bonus, you get your pressure off you. At some point it will dump, the whole shit will, will be dumped on you. Think about Volkswagen, what happened with the diesel stuff in uh, a couple years ago, Scandal, and um, I, I, I don't know, I know hundreds, if not thousands of uh, cases all over the world. Asia, uh, US, environmental crimes, uh, people getting killed for diamonds or for cobalt or for whatever, you know. Things going on that are super nasty. Those are managers. So those are managers that were, at some point, they were learning at some university at some point. And they made decisions because of money, because of the fact that they lost their character. Hubris is the ability, it's what happens to leaders uh, that uh, lose their sense of reality. Why? Because you have people telling you all the time that you're cool. If you, if you have people telling you, well, you're so cool, 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 and at some point you start thinking, wonderful and strong, and, uh, but, but it's not true. Something that they're telling you. So what you need to do as an individual, you need to be aware of that, and you need to say no. I'm gonna be strong. I'm gonna keep myself in check, and this is the hardest part. I'm gonna keep myself um, surrounded by people that don't give me always the right. Give me sometimes bad feedback. And that, that's the way to manage important things. Get surrounded by people that have the character to keep you in check. It's hard, but it works. Okay, I don't know if it answers your question. Yeah. Is that cool? So you had another question? No, I wanted to ask Zach. You No, sure, uh, yeah, it happens unconsciously, but uh, let's say, uh, how, how to put it? Um, the, the next 10 seconds after you wake up, after you wake up, after you wake up, you uh, experience something that is unique. Dialogue within yourself, and you see clearly <coughs> things that are troubling you. <coughs> Just try it. Try to think about something that's important for you before you go to sleep in the morning. The first two, three, four, five seconds, 
you will experience a dialogue, something telling you do this or do that. I don't know if you've ever experienced it, I've, I have. Why? Because you're, what, when you're sleeping, your brain is not yet overcrowded with chemicals. That you need cortisol and stuff, you need to wake up and get activated. Your brain is at rest, and your orbital frontal cortex can have a dialogue with yourself and tell you, this is what you should do. That's why people meditate, that's why Asian cultures focus so much on the mind and on the, on the spirit. That's why uh, warriors uh, go and get, your, get themselves out, uh, hardened up physically in order to get the body so dumped up that um, you are able to uh, think clearly. So that's, that's, a, that's kind of a way to deal with it. Um, once you're awake, your, your, your whole body is filled up with, let's say, chemicals that make you act maybe in a, in a non-correct way. That's a way to explain it very simple, OK? Uh, yeah, so. Ja, nun die Online-Leute sind dann. Okay, dann, dann, dann lass ich die nur kurz raus. Die, die sind jetzt getaktet. Ah, okay, okay. Ja, okay. Wir machen eine Pause dann? Ja, kurz, ja. Okay, okay we make a, a, a little pause, five minutes, okay? And then we continue. Okay, in five minutes we continue. Coming forward, if you guys want to come back, you might want to close the door. So one thing going on is now, okay, this is cool. How do I get the strategy and the digitalization process in place, right? So I was advised I should not make it very technical. I will try to keep my word. Let's say we have our technical uh, social uh, matrix here at some point. So I know it's hard. Please try to come back. Hello? Hey. Any questions? No? You cool? Just keep it quiet, okay? Uh, so we have our technical and social level here, and then um, we add a third axis. Which is going to be the digitalization. So basically here, what we have is, uh, we have painted the whole thing in two dimensions. Two D. Right, one, two, three, and four. And this is just a framework, which doesn't mean that it is uh, the, real, the real truth, it's just a framework, okay? Um, not more, not less. And uh, with our levels and our uh, stuff going on, And now comes artificial intelligence and does something to us, okay, to this framework. Um, so it brings us to a third dimension that uh, is going to change the whole arena. Hmm? And uh, the digitalization strategy basically uh, can be uh, summarized in super simple terms. Okay, I'm just trying, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to be uh, super, super simple here. One, two, three, and then take it from there. One is going to be data. 
So you need to gather and structure data as much as you can. The second level is to get knowledge. From this data, you need to organize it and get knowledge. And the third level is to get this knowledge organized and create value. So you get data, from data you get knowledge, from knowledge you get value. Which means that what you're actually doing is you're getting a cube, okay? You're getting a cube of slices, three slices. Uh, here you have your uh, three axes. And you're getting your first level, your data. You're moving your data along to create knowledge and you're moving your knowledge along to create value. And you do that for all these 16 fields. Let's say on an uh, individual level, on a factory level, okay? So you get that together. Or on a relationship level and a process level or at an organizational level, at supply chain level, and so on and so forth. You gather data from the individual uh, with wearables, okay, like your watch, your phone, your whatever. You gather data from relationships through social media, TikTok, and stuff like that. Uh, you gather data from empowerment, what uh, people need, you gather data from an organization, and then you also gather data from processes and through Internet of Things and uh, uh, RFIDs and whatnot. You gather data from factories, you gather data from supply chain, you gather data and you organize that data to get value from it and in order to get uh, value from it, you need to create knowledge from the data. And this is your strategy. Not more, not less. It's, it's, it's also universal. It's going to be working uh, at any environment, at any complexity level that you guys can think of. The more complex, the more power you need on your knowledge. Hmm? Some people use Excel. Some people use uh, um, complex uh, business intelligence models to make their decisions and create value, okay? This is, uh, this is kind of the way, so following this strategic, let's say, path, let me say a couple of things about I promise try to keep it simple as possible, managerial as possible, okay? So when you get data, you have two things going on. You have the nodes generating the data, which can be people, machines, products, whatever, and you have the connections between the data, what, you, what we call edges, which is uh, basically the information exchange or material exchange or cash exchange or anything, okay? But we ha what we have here at the end of the day is a network and not any network. We have a cyber physical system network formed by people, machines, products, and stuff that are, at the end of the day 
are going to create mm, a value for a certain customer, but what you have is a network. These nodes, the people, the workers, the machines, the products are giving constantly information, are communicating to each other, and uh, what the way to describe a network is with a graph. So a graph is not but a collection of nodes and edges in an ordered manner. These nodes are sending to a cloud or to a, uh, another system, are sending information constantly, okay? So this is just uh, uh, sending information up to a certain cloud or to a certain uh, system. They're, certain, uh, they're sending information constantly and also the topology of this graph is changing constantly because people are talking to each other or not um, depending on their relationships, right? So when we deal with a graph, with a complex graph, we want two things to happen. We want the average path length <coughs> to decrease, which is the distance that uh, you need in order to get information on material from A to B. You, you want this to be small. And you want your clustering coefficient to increase. The clustering coefficient is describing the quality of the information exchange between groups. Okay, so once you have clustering coefficient going up and average path length going down, you get best performance. And um, I'll finish here with this little graphic. This it links organizational design with this whole theory of network management or, or network science. Let's paint several organizations. Let's say one-dimensional organization. This is, by the way, N, the number of nodes that are in the organization that are active. And this is the average path length. As I said, if you want it, uh, the formula is uh, one divided by n times n minus one, sum of all the distances between all the nodes. You can Google it up, it's just not, not very, it's just a mean value of the distances between the nodes. So what happens if we have a one-dimensional organization, which is a classical hierarchical organization? Okay. One dimension. The boss communicates to the subordinates. They get the information downstream. And uh, after getting the information downstream, they get it up again with some action, okay? So this is one dimensional. So when we have a one dimensional organization, the average path length grows linearly with N. So this is N to the exponent of one. This means if you grow, if the number of nodes in your organization grows, it grows, the average path length grows with it, and it's never ending. So you have a, let's say, a maximum of 100. Small factory, tiny factory. 100 people that you can manage, not more, because we have a capacity, right? Um, all right, that's not cool. We need a different system. This, is, this, this hierarchical system, it's the military. Okay. 
So we need a different system. What we get is uh, two dimensions. And here what we have is, uh, okay, we have a value creating process. We communicate with our customer and with our supplier, but we also communicate with our department. What we get is a matrix. Maybe you've heard of it. Matrix organizational design. Okay, so what you get here on the average path length level from a network science perspective, and this is what I'm trying to deploy here, what you get here is that uh, the growth of the average path length is a little bit different to the exponent of n to the exponent of one divided by two. This two is this two, okay? Which means that if you have two organizations with the same number of people competing, the one has a hierarchical structure, one-dimensional. The one has a matrix structure, two-dimensional. The one with a matrix structure has better performance. Because the average path length is smaller. They will gain in the long run. They, they will get their products, their information, their money faster from A to B. So they're faster, the throughput time is faster, they will win. They have an advantage that you can measure, which is this gap. Okay? Cool, so, but this might not be enough. We want to get maybe to the third dimension. This is where European companies are operating right now. You get a cube. Okay? So you get a bunch of nodes working together, not only hierarchically, not only on the process level, also on the standardization level, bringing information from A to B from a standard uh, perspective. See, this is the third level. So what you get is another gain in performance. Only because you are structurally organizing differently. Okay? This is another gain. So in the end, you can uh, win dimensions. The natural uh, limit is called scale-free. And the natural limit is the logarithmus of the logarithmus of n for the average path length. Okay? This whole thing is called strategic organizational design. The scale-free network topology is the same that the human brain has. I predict, you can call me on that, that humanity is developing a brain, a super brain, in which the neurons are not uh, neuron cells, but are humans. So we are developing a super brain in the planet. Thanks to the internet, thanks to the interaction. And the topology of the humanity is developing towards a brain-like topology. And this is the way, uh, and I, I am sure that the nation or the organization that gets that brain-like topology will win in any competition because of this. This, uh, this is just network science physics, okay? If you are more interested on this uh, stuff, you can uh, read the book Network Science by Barabasi. It's from 2016, okay? 
Well, anyway, um, I'm going to be then done. You can contact me anytime. Uh, this is, I'm, I'm going to leave you here my email, h4lean at gmail.com. If you don't want to write uh, uh, me to the professional address or to the, this is my personal email. You can find my uh, information on the website, prophh4.com. And happy to answer your questions now. I'm gonna stop the video, and if you, uh, maybe professor, uh, give me your card, I can email you the PDF.